part two of my project Jeep. I'm working on the drive line now so I can weld in the engine mounts and work on the transmission cross member as well. I'm putting the AX15 behind the Chevy 5.3 which uh, I still need to rebuild. And I got all these parts from Novak Research. This plate here mounts between the transmission and the Chevy bell housing. And this Chevy bell housing is a standard bell housing set up for a 168 tooth flywheel or flex plate. And there's a center bore, which is, uh, this one happens to be the larger size. Novak sells a ring that mounts in between this flange and this circle here to help set the center line of the transmission. The bell housing gets bolted to the transmission from this back side. So the bolts go through the bell housing into this plate which is a really nice, really, really well machined part. And along with this kit, I bought their flywheel that they spec for this application. Pilot bearings already installed. They have a clutch that works for this application. Hardware, throwout fork, hydraulic slave cylinder, adjustable throwout bearing, and a lot of uh, instructions about how to do this, which is very, very useful. Uh, before you start a project like this to have some type of reference material to go over uh, before you get started. So I'm going to mock this up and build it so I can place the engine and drive line inside the Jeep frame. But the first thing I need to do is install the bell housing, the clutch, and set the throw up bearing uh, free play and then start bolting this all together. All right, the clutch is installed on the flywheel. The alignment tool that came with the clutch, the diameter is uh, a little bit too small to fit the pilot bearing. So just some masking tape, like 20 wraps of masking tape, makes the tool fit perfectly inside that pilot bearing. And then the tool centers the clutch inside the pressure plate as you tie it down and then uh, you bolt the pressure plate to the flywheel in a clockwise fashion, or you know, skip sides and make sure you, you pull it on straight. Make sure if you use these bolts that come with Novak, they have a shoulder on the bolt, and these bolts go through holes in the flywheel which accept the shoulder, whereas this type of a hole is threaded the whole way. These ones have about, uh, a quarter of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch of uh, clearance for the shoulder, so make sure you use the right holes in the flywheel. I have the bell housing on, bolted to the plate. You can see how there's a gap between the uh, hole in the center of the bell housing and the plate that uh, Novak supplies, so I have to buy the uh, ring that goes in there. You could probably get away without using it but it can't hurt to have it to make sure everything is perfectly centered. And I have the throw up bearing which is adjustable with a fork sitting on the pivot and uh, I'm going to set the free play on this throw up bearing to the teeth. There's a couple ways to do it by taking measurements and bolting it together but I think I'll be able to see through the window here to make sure I have the right amount of clearance. You gain more clearance by turning this, and there's the threaded portion here that fits on the inside of the bearing race. And then once you set it to where you want it to be, there's a pin that you install through this hole, through this flange, and then into the bearing to keep it from spinning. And I'll take a better video of that because it's really tough to tell with it installed on the uh, transmission right now. It seems to work pretty smooth. There's a little bit of noise from the machining on this shaft in the inside diameter of the uh, throughout bearing. 
but I have no grease on it right now either, so maybe the grease would make the difference. So now the trick is to line up this transmission with the center line, get the input shaft to the transmission to accept the pilot bearing in the back of the flywheel, and then bolt the bell housing to the engine. Transmission went on okay. I had to put the transmission in first gear to spin the uh, input shaft to get it to line up with the clutch splines. And I mounted the hydraulic slave cylinder. These are metric bolts that go into the engine block. Uh, I didn't have a long enough uh, bolt for this bottom one, so right now I just have it being pinched off uh, with a 3 8 bolt. But I do need to get new grade 8 bolts anyways. And that's how that'll get installed. One thing I noticed is this slave cylinder pushes the fork out. And I have the gap set for the most part with that throw out bearing. If you look inside above my finger here, That is where the gap is supposed to be. That gap is a little bit too much right now, but I'm not gonna go any farther because I could tell um, there's too much space between this push rod and the fork. And you can see on the back side of the fork, there's the pivot. So in order to get the fork close enough to the push rod, it pulls it off of the fork, off of the pivot, excuse me. So uh, no vac cells and adjustable pivot right there and that'll push the fork out when it's in the neutral position and I'll bring it up close to the push rod because I need about that much more and that comes out to about a half of an inch longer for the pivot and then this um, hydraulic slave will work out just nice. The adjustable pivot looks like this. So the one on the left is what I have. And the one on the right, you can see, once you install it through the back of the bell housing, you can leave it installed and then adjust it with this lock nut and by spinning this in and out. So I'll need to use that with this, this style bell housing. Aside from that, all the Novak parts are uh, really well engineered and machined. All I have left from them now is the uh, engine mounts and uh, cross member mount, so I'll work on that now. So if you have any questions about how this AX15 bolts up to an LS, uh, just let me know and don't hesitate to ask any questions. I'm, I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks. Well, I was on a roll and I decided to go ahead and install the engine and transmission into the frame. I welded the mounts according to the instructions provided by Novak and that measures from this hole in the front of the mount 29 and an eighth inches to the back of this tube and once I made sure they were square I tacked them in set the engine in and uh, mocked everything up this is their transmission mount and right now I have it installed in the lower position. I think I will end up putting spacers between the engine, excuse me, the transmission mount and the transmission. It comes with some bushings that are about a half inch maybe tall. And I think I'll need that because right now it's tough to tell with the engine sitting on jack stands. But I believe the engine well, from this view it's tough to tell, but if, if the angle is too much going right to left, I'll put spacers in that back piece. And if not, it looks like I might get away with right where it is. But it's deceiving because the frame is sitting on jack stands and I'm not sure how it's going to line up when we put the suspension on. But these mounts welded right up. They fit the frame really well. 
really good bends and good hardware too. You can tell the isolation mounts are really well built. Carriage bolt with a square head in the top and then the base has another bushing with a molded in washer and then the lock nut. So <laughs> Robbie needs me and uh, the good news is I have the engine and transmission built into the frame and we're making some good progress. If you have any questions about this, please uh, don't hesitate to ask.